Um, I'm going to talk to you today about this uh, standardising of resale contracts that we've been uh, trialling on a number of uh, sites around um, the, the New Zealand network. It came about through a, uh, a conversation that uh, a consultant had um, with some sealing teams uh, that were working out of New Plymouth and she emailed them back saying, uh, gentlemen, your data is crap. Um, it was Kat Hancock from MWH, but effectively, while we're good at putting stuff down on the roads, um, she was quite right that the data that we were returning, which uh, to put into the database, was requiring too much effort on the part of the consultant to do a bit of sanitising. So um, why have we gone down this route? Really to uh, remove problems of bad data delivery, um, make up for some of the time wasting that goes on uh, in the industry trying to fill in surfacing records at the end of the surfacing season. So we're trying to be more timely in our uh, deliveries. Um, and we're trying to demystify some of the sealing terms for the guys who are actually the ones out on the road. Uh, and they're the ones who are supposed to be returning this, uh, the sealing records. Um, and they are not necessarily computer literate. They know what they do. Um, but when it comes to interpreting things like Shadom, um, that's really not their forte. Um, and in going down this path allows us to apply rules to the software, so uh, any misinterpretation by people putting in the information, collecting the data, can be eliminated. Um, using a, a job management system like this means that there's one point of data entry, um, and we can use it for a number of uses. So, and I'm going to run through those now. So effectively, okay, we're going to go from uh, the stockpile where the material is situated out to where the data, uh, to the material where it's laid out on the road by the chip sealing guys um, who bring in a surfacing docket and eventually it ends up in our asset management system where um, it's then used for analysis purposes and has obviously a big role to play in things like the Ford Work program. Uh, we have um, three tools in our arsenal that we use. Uh, we have a, a job management system which we use to record the site locations, uh, what the treatment is that's going to be used, uh, and effectively the costs that are associated to that. In the asset register, we're able to buy, uh, build customised tables, and in this case we're recording information about the stockpile. And then we have a, a reporting tool for complex reporting, but this allows us to draw the information from the job management system and the asset register into a report or a number of reports that we can then uh, submit back to the client that trace how the jobs are doing. Um, so this is the uh, stockpile site. So we've got this set up in the asset register and even though the majority of the setup is standard across um, the contracts that we're using it in, it has to be customised for the uh, specific clients to reflect the source of the material that's available. Um, and in this case, we're recording that information in here, plus the size of the chip and other specific detail that we get down to, cheers, Bruce, um, like the PSV and ALD for each of the chips. Uh, and we're then using this information back in our job management system. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and uh, we've also recorded the ability to have a second chip with obviously the PSV, ALD and source. And I'm sorry, I'm getting right into detail, but that's the detail that some of our clients are requiring us uh, to report in. Once the stockpile sites are in RAM, Once the stockpile sites are in the asset register, um, we can then query on them and find out, sorry, I was trying so hard, uh, we, can, we can do queries about how much material's out on a particular stockpile site, which sites have a grade three chip, which sites are handiest to the ones that we're going to um, be using in our, in our treatments. Uh, this uh, map shows um, all the grade three sites are pink, uh, and the black sites are the ones that have chip, but of a lesser, um, a lesser grade or a lesser quantity that I'm needing for a particular site. Uh, within the contract setup, we have the main sealing items. We're using uh, 
columns not um, we're misusing columns as they're normally specified in the uh, in our job management system uh, down the bottom there we're actually tagging the sea surface uh, material code to the particular main item so we know how they uh, how they relate so when we extract the data later on we're also specifying as part of the contract set up against these surfacing items the chip size so in this example here under the short description, we're saying that it's a 2-4, it's a racked in seal, which you can see at the bottom there. Uh, in the job management system, uh, we're recording all of the worksite details, we're recording the location of it, what the width of the site is, and what the start and end displacements are. Information that we're going to use again in the return back to the client. Um, these sites, once they're obviously in the system, uh, we can then attribute a particular cost to them, and we do that uh, here using the quick estimating tool. We're using it to record things like preparation of the site, drawing up any surfacing diagrams, uh, and on top of the ceiling stuff, we can also record how much line marking's going on out there. I always had a plan that we'd be able to take this line marking uh, information and correlate it back again to the asset management side of it so we know how much line marking data um, we are putting down out there and change the renewal dates on that. The end of this process, it leaves the client and us, the contractor, with an actual cost of what each site's going to be uh, so we can make sure the budgets are correct and we know where we stand. Uh, once the data's in the job management system, we're then able to correlate that with the stockpile sites, find out which sites are nearest. So in this diagram here, I don't know if you can see, you've got the pink sites, which are my grade three chip, and the blue patches are the uh, resealing sites, and we can then establish which sites are closest to which stockpiles. Um, you know, having to create um, specific chips over a longer distance obviously increases our cost, and the whole purpose of this is monitoring our costs and trying to keep them down so they're more efficient. Right, so when the site's completed, um, because we're a contractor and obviously one of our um, main drivers is how much we've actually put down, we go out, we check the site, are the start and end displacements correct? While it's important for us because that's why we get paid, it's also important for the client because they need to have data accuracy. It also gives us a chance to uh, review the, the sealed area that's been put down. Um, and where there are line markings going on, we actually use the completed date of the seal rather than the completed um, date of the job. Uh, sometimes markings happen in the following month and obviously if we're putting our claim in, we want to make sure we're paid in the month that we've done the work. So typically we could seal one month and then put marking down the following month rather than pay once the job's completed, we can claim partially as we go on. And right down at the bottom there you can't see that but it allows the client to actually see the total cost of the site once it's completed. We also um, have um, been creative with the drop-downs that we're using. These ones here, we're allowing ourselves to specify uh, the binder, the cutter, the adhesion rate, and we've got other things like design life and application rate. They're all uh, extractable from a drop-down list. Some of them are a bit longer than others, obviously, when you think about design life, but when you think about things like cutter, when there are obviously certain parts per hundred that go with the Kero, um, is actually quite a short list. And it means that our guys can be quite specific about what they're selecting, and it gives them the choice. Um, and again, these are, uh, can be tapered to what the particular binder is that the client's wanting us to use. Okay, right. Um, we also use our job management system to record other information about the site. So, for example, we can load up the surfacing documents. We can load up any additional photos. We can put up um, claim sheets from subcontractors. In this example, it's because we wrote, uh, re ran an ad in the Herald, and it's the bill from the Herald. So um, it becomes one source of the truth for us, and it saves us having to then go back and uh, dig in piles of paper to find the information that we're actually after. And it's got visibility. We've got nothing to hide and it's there for the client to view as well. Um, same thing could be done on the stockpile sites where we can put up information about the testing of the material and the PSV and the ALD of each of the, the chip that's at a particular stockpile site. 
um, the customised reporting. We've got uh, a progress report, and this is broken down by uh, site, which we've actually, in this option here, we're using the client's reference or client's known name, and each site's broken down by each of the activities uh, and giving a cost per site. So we know exactly um, what's happening and where the costs have been incurred. Um, the other report, and this is probably uh, my favourite, this one is um, a progress report and it's uh, an outstanding work versus completed work. So every month everybody knows um, how much work's been done and how much is still outstanding and we've obviously got the budgets running through as well. Um, we know very well when we're out on site sometimes things change and we're asked to increase the size or make another uh, change to the existing uh, requirements, and this allows us to monitor where those changes uh, have occurred. Crocky Dick, I must have talked far too fast. Um, okay, so data delivery, um, you're probably all familiar with this form. Um, to me, uh, manually entering data allows uh, errors to creep in and interpretation, especially if you're trying to read somebody else's writing. Um, so what we've done at the end of our process, or on a monthly or whatever the contractual arrangement is, we're able to produce our data in a, in a form that will load directly in using the bulk import tool. Um, and the columns are all aligned, the data's all there, we can do validation, we're not expecting the the people who are putting the data in to know whether this column's required or that column's required. So we're taking away that, that chance that we're obviously going to get data uh, incorrectly entered. Um, the bones of the job management system, we've rearranged to suit ourselves, but um, you know, I think it's working well. We've had it going for three years now on a couple of contracts, um, and I know it's certainly gone out to a further couple of clients um, within the last year. Um, yeah, I quite enjoy using it, and I think the guys in the field are also uh, buying into it. They can see the value when they put the job in, and it's taking away the effort they had to put in when it came to doing up those sea surface sheets at the end of the day. Okay, thanks very much. Is there any questions?